Hello, and I hope you all are having a good day. Um, good to hear you're doing well. Um, I have some happy mail to share with you. I have another fantastic card from my friend BJ. She always makes me smile when she sends me these wonderful cards. And it is a daisy in a teacup. You're gonna love it. Look how cute that is. Adorable. I love it. It has so much texture to it. There's also some glitter and shine if you can see the sparkles. That's really, it's, it's very, very kind of BJ and she always adds a little something extra. See on the back, there's a tiny little flower there. Hi Kathy, how are you? Uh, Karen says that it's gloomy there. Uh, it, it is here too in New Jersey. I think we are getting your weather. Um, there's a very big possibility of some really nasty weather later coming. Something wicked this way comes, they say, huh? I have some more happy mail to share. I belong to a group of swappers uh, called the Savvy Swappers, and um, I've gotten the first of a few of the holiday catalog swaps in. And this is from my friend Paula. Uh, Fran's asking, oh, she's asking Karen a uh, question. Okay, so yeah, that weather is uh, crazy. Uh, Karen was just in New Jersey visiting her daughter. Oh, cool. Well, I'm way down in South Jersey. In fact, it takes me like 20 minutes to get to Delaware. That's how far down the state we are. Thank you guys for sharing the video as well. So here's one of the two cards that was created by Paula, and I'll get really close so you can have a look. It's inside an envelope, so I hope that's not creating too much of a glare. And didn't she do a great job? I love it. Her cards always look amazing. Um, and here is the one uh, with the Alpine, a new Alpine set. I'm trying to make sure there's not too much a glare on it. So cute. So I have a card that is um, a video tutorial and it premiered this morning on my YouTube channel and it's already, you guys are asking um, some wonderful questions about it. Um, I'm so happy that you are comfortable with emailing me and asking questions about it. And that's, that's wonderful. I love to be able to share. So this is the card. It is a one layer card and it's created with the stamp set Falling Flowers and another stamp set, Itty Bitty Greetings. And it's a one layer card in the respect that there are no layers. You can see here, a real good close up, there are no layers to this card. Now the lighting could be a little wonky because um, we've got some lamps plus natural light going, so I apologize if the lighting is a bit off. Here's a really good close-up look. So the questions were um, about one-layer cards. And one-layer cards are my arch nemesis <laughs> in the respect that it's not easy to make a card that is just a one-layer card. Do you just put some stamping on a piece of heavy cardstock? You know, what, what to do? So um, that way, oh, I'm glad you guys like it. Thanks, guys. Um, so this is my answer, my solution to the, the problem of if I know that I have a specific challenge in my crafting, in my artwork, that I want to try to get a little bit more comfortable with, then I'm going to push myself to do it more than I would normally do it. So um, I stamped directly onto the Crumb Cake cardstock with Crumb Cake ink, and I used watercolor pencils to do the coloring. And so it, the watercolor pencils 
are not going to soak through to the inside of the card. And you can see the inside of the card here is still okay. If I had used markers, either either one of the markers that we carry at Stampin' Up, which is the Stampin' Write markers or the Stampin' Blends markers, it would most assuredly go through this cardstock. So, um, hi Betty, good morning. So that's why I use the colored pencils. The colored pencils are my way, my solution to the one layer card problem. Also, on my blog, but it hasn't, hasn't happened yet. It's going to be at, I think, 7 p.m. today. Um, I'm taking place in a blog hop that is, um, what is it called? The International Highlights Winners. So um, all of you that went and voted for the card that I created earlier in the month that was that blue card with the trifold that was a team member for, I created it for a team member. Um, as a congratulations for her titling up um, that card won second place in the challenge. So thank you to everybody on YouTube and Facebook that has gone over to that particular, um, to Kylie's blog and has voted for my card. I, I really appreciate it. The voting lasts for a week and then they release who the winners are and the winners are um, invited, the top 10, to participate in a blog hop. So, um, oh, thank you guys. And so I needed to make another card for another team member that has recently titled up. My team is just like performing unbelievably. They are an outstanding group of people and I couldn't ask for a better group, honestly. I love these ladies. But I had another reason to make another special card. So um, I did create another one and I know that, and this person does not know yet that they're getting this card. I always keep it a secret so that I'm not even gonna say who it is until they actually receive it. Um, but I know that this particular person likes fancy fold cards and, um, and coloring as well. So I came up with this card and I'm gonna show you a close up. I hope you like it. And I hope it's not too washed out from the sun and the lights. But it's another one of the double Z fold box cards. It does look a bit washed out. I'm looking at it on my computer and it's very washed out. If I bring it back away from those lights, you can see that it is, um, it looks like a sunset on the ocean or on a lake. You can take your pick and it's one of the fancy fold cards. I'll turn it a couple of different ways and on the back there is an area for adding a greeting. Hi Philomena, thanks for joining in. I wish I could get you a better look right now on the video but holding it back seems to help a little bit with the coloring and then I'll try it when I flip the camera down. But um, I have this on my blog that's going to be this evening and um, what a fun fold that is. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Uh, good morning, Donna. So this is called a double, double Z fold box card, and this is created from one of the tutorials over at Adding to Designs. Um, and you'll get to see, if you go to my blog around 7 p.m. today, you'll get to see the um, actual photographs of this that look much better. You can actually see the coloring um, that was my favorite part, was creating the sunset to this card. So we'll check it in just a little bit. So if you guys have any questions for me, um, then that would, that would be great. I'm happy to answer anything you have. And, uh, oh, I have one more announcement. I have a special online class that is coming in November. The sign-up period is going to be during the month of October. So if you would like to participate in this class, then I will get a sign up out there. Kind of like, you know, when you click on the link to go to the paper share, then I'm going to click, a, uh, make another, you know, thing where you can click it and sign up for an online class. And I will be using the Timeless Tidings Project Kit. And I got all the pieces out here so you could see. This is the one that looks like the beautiful watercolor paper. Yes, Karen, I did. Uh, with 
with framelits. Um, and this is, I haven't opened it yet, but this is kind of the good, uh, good look at what the kit pieces look like. And so if you want to participate in this class, then what you'll need to do is, I'll have, I'll have it all spelled out, but it will be the project kit and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the Timeless Tidings stamp set that goes with it. So you will get those. And then I will put in, I will you know, give as a gift some goodies. And it's going to be some twine. It'll be enough twine to do the project. It will not be a whole package of twine. Some washi tape. These are things we're going to add to it that you do not have to purchase. I'm just going to give that as a gift. And some of the new glimmer paper. So if anyone is interested, uh, yes, Anne Marie, you can you can buy the class from Canada. Um, you can. What I want to do is I want to have everybody order their products in the month of August or in the month of October. To, so to sign up for it in the month of um, October, and then on on November, then we will begin the online class. Um, and yes, it, it will be something that if you are a demonstrator and you want to participate, I will open it up to demonstrators as well. Um, it will be a, it'll be a different kind of scale, price scale. But if you want to participate in the class and you're a customer and you order it in my online store, then you're going to get some of the freebies that I'm going to include and you'll get the class for free. So that's the best part. And I'm going to do this as a four-part class in a group. So that way you will be able to participate and do um, like a couple of projects per week. And you'll have enough time to be able to go through um, before the next class starts and get however many of the cards of that style that you like to have done. So um, I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm going to do some really good techniques and some really great fun designs and do some lessons and some teaching along the way. And it'll be a really great chance for everybody to get together and fellowship in that particular Facebook group and do the online class. So it's a little bit different this time than just purchasing it outright. And, um, and I will also provide that option if someone doesn't want to go to the Facebook group, that's okay. You can just purchase the, the online tutorial and, and we can accommodate you that way. Uh, hi, Tammy. And she's, this is a first time viewing my videos. You missed the first part. You're going to go through and see what I did. <laughs> I have not yet, I've just started. I have not yet begun my project. So um, you are in time. It's no problem. All right, so I believe I've gone through everything. I'm really excited about this Timeless Tidings class. So look for more information. I'll put it here on my Facebook page and I will do a, a bulletin blast out to my newsletter subscribers. And that's where I try to put all of my latest news is in my newsletter. So if you have not subscribed to my newsletter, then there's a place here on Facebook that you can do it. You can also go over to my blog at jennyhalldesign.com and there is a little place on the sidebar that you can click to sign up for my newsletter. And if at any time that you don't want to be on the newsletter anymore, just click unsubscribe and it's gone. Very simple. So let's get started with our project. Today I'm going to create with Falling for Leaves and it's gonna be a watercolor card, but it's very easy watercolor. We're going to create a watercolor wash, and then we're going to add some watercoloring and some fun splatters to one of the die cuts, and it's just a wonderful thing here. All right, so I'm gonna flip this camera around and get started. Move a few things here. Pardon my hand while I move everything around. Da 
that's my video stand that I'm working to uh, to get set up just right. Okay, I think we're all set. So, falling for leaves. You guys have seen me create several things so far with this fantastic bundle. And I just absolutely adore it. There's not enough that I can say that's great about this. This is not just a fall or a Thanksgiving set. And the card that we are going to create today is going to be a great example of that. So I will start off my project with a piece of watercolor paper. And I've already cut it to size. We are, we are not going to completely coat the whole, the whole piece of paper. We're just going to create a watercolor wash. And we're gonna be doing these colors today, mint macaron, grapefruit grove, and blackberry bliss. So the, the watercolor wash is one of the things that I get a lot of questions about. And so we're just going to go step by step, very easy, and create a fun watercolor wash. Hi, Stesha, and hello, Carolyn. Hi, Allie. I'm so glad you got to catch me live too. First thing I'm going to do is to make sure I don't have any residual color in my aqua painter. I give it just a little bit of squeeze. And if you have not used an aqua painter before, then it's a water paint brush. There's tap water in the barrel and you can fill it up all the way or just a little bit. As you squeeze to apply pressure to the barrel, it comes out of the bristles. So if you are using friction of the bristles on the paper, then it absolutely will help the water to come out. And if you want more water, you give it a little squeeze. Very easy. Have a wonderful day, Betty. I'm so glad that you were able to stop in. I'll talk to you later. So what I'm gonna do for this watercolor wash is start moving the bristles and then I gave it a squeeze. And some of the water just starts coming out and I'm gonna move that water around. I want the watercolor wash to kind of be touching the side of the paper and flowing out into the project. Not, not anything fancy and I'm not making it a particular shape. I'm just letting it be what it's gonna be. And, and that's really, there's no formula. Everybody might have their individual formula, but for me, there's no formula for a watercolor wash. So now that my paper is wet, I'm going to take some of the ink that is from the, from the inside case of my stamp pad, and I do that by squeezing these parts together. I'm going to pick up some of this really pretty orange ink, and then as my bristles touch this paper, I'm going to give a light squeeze so that the water pushes the ink off of the bristles. And what that's going to do, as you can see, is it just, instead of the ink staying in one spot, it goes out and it creates more of a natural look. And then I can just kind of move some things around and instant watercolor wash. So I'm gonna do this a few times. And because my paper is already wet, then it's going to spread everything out. If my paper were dry, we can do this uh, as an example on a dry area, let's say up here. See how it doesn't really move as much? Sometimes it will, but there's still that one place where, where the, um, the paper started drinking up the ink faster than what I could get it. So you can see that there is a difference. So if I work on the wet part of the paper, I feel like I have a little bit more success. And I want this to just be something that looks like a big wash blob of color. This can be as dark or as light as I would like it to be. And as the paper kind of starts to buckle just a little bit, then the color will settle into the different areas. That's part of the look that I really like with this technique. 
So that's it. That is exactly all it is to making a watercolor wash. And I have this paper towel here to make sure that I get all of the orange ink off of the bristles. And I do that by squeezing the brush a little bit and moving it on the paper towel. And when I see that there's no more color coming off the brush, I know that it's clean. So I'm gonna put this away for just a second and we'll have a close-up look at this. Now we can let this dry naturally, which has a beautiful look to it whenever it dries naturally, or you can speed it along with a heat tool. However, when the heat tool comes in contact with this water, it's going to move. It's gonna push it around and it's not going to look like this anymore. So if I were to set this aside and let it dry naturally, it's going to look just like it does right now after it's dried up. Uh, let's see, Karen is asking, could I use the chamois to clean my brush? Of course I could, but um, it's not going to give me the same amount of friction and absorb as much of that water as a paper towel. I'm just used to a paper towel and the chamois could work. I have, I have used it in in different instances where I couldn't find a paper towel. But I just really like a paper towel and I can't see on the chamois when all of the paint is out of my bristles, but I can on a paper towel. So it's just, it's what you're, what you're used to. It's, um, what do they call uh, that, that old saying? They said six of one, half a dozen of another. <laughs> it's, it's all a matter of what you like to do. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and I have already prepared another panel that is dry. So I made this one and allowed it to dry naturally. And you can see that the paper, it buckled just a little bit, but it's really, it's okay. And, and that happens by letting it dry naturally. So we're going to do a little bit of stamping on this. And while we, it dries, we'll add some coloring to, um, to a die cut. So I want to add kind of a tone on tone light look. So we're gonna pull that grapefruit grove back out. And I have this cute little stamp that is from the Falling for Leaves stamp set. And I'm going to let it be a tone on tone look, like so. And I'll just add a few of these. So this is the second generation of ink, first and second generation. I don't know that I could get a third out of it, but I'll try. Very, very faint, which is perfect. So this is going to give a, a nice look that's not going to distract away from all of that beautiful movement that has been made in the watercolor wash. So this is going to need to dry up for just a little bit. And while I do that, we're going to add some coloring to a die cut. Now this, is, this die cut was cut from a piece of watercolor paper that was already colored on one side. So we're not gonna pay attention to this <laughs> because this is from another project. We are gonna use this side here. And I've used the detailed leaves thinlets on watercolor paper. And when I do that, these little pieces that would normally come away from the die cut, they tend to stay in place. And that's a great thing because that allows me to use all of those little hills and valleys and ridges to my project's benefit. So I really like how those pieces stay in place. So I'm going to use mint macaron this time. And I, this is watercolor paper on this die cut. So I'm going to add water all over this little die cut. I don't want it to be like absolutely soaking wet, but I want all of the surface to be wet. Because when we add the color, we want the water to pull the color up through the rest of it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit here and I'll start down in the base of the petal and give it a little squeeze also with the, you know, squeezing the barrel. 
and because the paper is wet it's going to pull up some of the color into the rest of the the um, the leaf if you get too much water then just kind of dial it back a little bit by your with your paintbrush you can always use the paper towel also to do that hello Dawn and I'm just taking the color about halfway up the the actual leaf and that's the beginning part of this area where it these little ridges are and I'm doing that on all three so there's my light color and if I want it to get just a little bit higher up I can kind of fade that color out with a clean paintbrush that means that I've already gotten the green I've dabbed it off now I'm just using that white area. Now I'm going to bring more color down into the base of the leaf. So this is going to give me an ombre look. Ombre in the, in the sense that it's more than one shade of the same color. So I have more concentrated ink down in the bottom. And along the stem. And I can bring it up into that area if I like, or I can just kind of keep it down in the bottom. But I really like how these, these little ridges collect all of the color. You can see here that they, it just settles down into the bottom. So I'll give you a close-up look of how this is supposed to kind of settle in. Now I can see it go just a little further. And it seems like it's just a higher, it's a darker color, higher concentration. And if I go too far with it, I can just kind of push things back and dial it back a little bit. Add more color down to another area. So imagine doing this to any sort of a die cut that you have. You could do this for Valentine's Day with a heart and have the heart be in a certain, a certain color on a certain side and then it fades back down into a lighter version of the color. It's a really fun look. And by doing it this way, I have not touched any color to the outside edges of the die cut. And so this is going to this is going to keep some of that integrity of the color of the watercolor paper that we started off with. So I've added enough color for my liking now and I will put away the green and we will move on to Blackberry Bliss. So I like the, the look of splatters. You guys know that. You see me do splatters all the time. And I'm going to add some sooty look with the Blackberry Bliss. So I've got the Stampin' Write marker, and this is the same ink that is in the stamp pad. It's dye ink, which is water-based. And I'm going to take the lid of my marker plus the long brush end I'm gonna move this well out of the way so that it doesn't get any unnecessary splat marks. And I'm going to flick the brush with, a, with an even pressure. I'm not trying to take the nib off of the marker, but I'm just trying to get a little bit of bend and I will flick it like this. And as you flick, you'll notice that because the paper is still wet, it's taking in that ink and kind of dispersing it out and I only did the flicks down here but you can see that there are still some flicks up near the top so it's a really fun look and then you can do it in other areas if you want a higher concentration a, a darker look but I like doing the splats this way because there's there's a love and a hate I have with it 
the love is that I love the, the, the style that it gives me these little tiny flick marks. The hate is that it is in one direction. And whenever I use a, like if I were to use a clear block and dilute some ink and then take my aqua painter and flick it off, then it comes off a little bit more broad area. It doesn't stay down to one small area. So that's the, the difference that, that I see within those two ways of adding the splatter marks. But that's our fun little leaf. And it I like how it has, by not touching the color to the outside part of the die cut, we were able to keep some of that light color of the of the uh, watercolor paper and it just gives us a little something extra so it's not necessary to absolutely coat the entire thing with water well with water but not with color so I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to layer it onto a piece of whisper white because it is kind of making a tic-tac-toe board here um, because it buckles a little bit and because it buckles then I, I want this paper to lay down nice and flat so I'm going to use a layer that is one eighth of an inch larger and I'm going to center it as best as I can without putting my face right in front of it and then I'll turn it over and push the adhesive in with the paper and that's going to activate everything here there we are so we have this pretty little leaf and I prepared one in advance that looks just almost the same <laughs> and we'll do some stamping with the sentiment and I'm going to use that Blackberry Bliss again so we have the colors that are echoing through the project. We have the grapefruit go with the tone on tone look, and we have the mint macaron, but it's more than one hue of the mint macaron. And then we'll have the sentiment that says thankful right underneath the area of the watercolor wash. And I'm going to keep in mind that this is stamped on watercolor paper. So I don't want to touch this. It is watercolor paper and it's not going to allow the sentiment to dry as quickly. And I have made the, the mistake, I cannot count how many times, of disturbing, <laughs> disturbing this particular type of panel. So I'm going to set it aside, let it dry a little bit more while we work on the inside of the card and we can add this, this pretty little leaf. We're starting to see some foliage change in New Jersey. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing some seasons change where you live. I'm going to put stamp and dimensional behind the areas that have these the the cuts in the leaf because if it comes loose, I don't want the cuts to fall out and away. I want the cuts to kind of you know want them to stay in the paper. So I'm going to put those stamp and dimensionals right in that area. It'll just kind of keep everything together nice and neat. And then I can place this in a way that I can still see the background stamping. There we go. Very easy, very simple. And we'll work on the inside of the card now. And we can just carry through this same stamp that we used. And bring that grapefruit grove to the inside of the card. Well, that's an oopsie for sure. I rocked the stamp, not meaning to. So what we'll do is make it look intentional. And then since I have my marker out, 
I can just kind of add a little bit more of those, um, those paint flicks and get that sooty look for the inside of the card. So today we have had just a very easy card to complete, but it's got some fun watercolor elements. And I'm going to adhere those Stampin' Dimensionals right down to the card base because I don't want to disturb the stamping on the watercolor paper. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me know, Gary. For everybody who doesn't know, that's my hubby, and he's letting me know that he has to go out. <laughs> he works inside and outside of the house. His job takes him all over the place. So what better way to not disturb me but to give me a, a message than by joining in the event and, <laughs> and, and telling me about it. That's so cute. So you can all say hi to Gary if you like. All right, I've got all these dimensional strips off and I'm going to carefully place this onto the card base without touching that area. I do learn from my mistakes, <laughs> just in case anybody um, ever notices that I try not to make the same mistake more than once. Now I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I try not to. So what kind of embellishments should we add to this project? What is your opinion? I've grabbed a few choices here. So here's the look of rhinestones. Those would look really nice. And we have the faceted dots. They have the Blackberry Bliss right here. And they have that minty green color. <laughs> Stesha, yeah, you were right on that one for faceted dots. Um, these are the adhesive back sequins and they would kind of match. We've got the frosted and clear epoxy droplets, and I think those would look nice as well. We have the white version of these, but I don't think the white would work because we've got more of a vanilla theme happening here. The watercolor paper has a little bit of a vanilla look to it. And then here are some pearls. So I think Stesha is right. We're gonna go with these wonderful little faceted dots. Oh, Sherry's idea is artisan pearls. Aha! I'm not sure where I have placed those. So I'll use my take your pick tool and the flat end or the pointy end is going to work well. If you have not used this yet, it's fun and it works really easy. You can switch off the ends in this respect, and then there's also another attachment that goes with it. So I'm going to use the pointy end, and then this is the putty end that picks up loose pieces like this and places them down easily. So what I'll do is I'll kind of push one of these little guys off of his place use the putty end and there he is right on the card and I'll give it just a little little push to activate everything and then we've got this really pretty blackberry bliss color as well and it'll go nicely right there and push it in with my finger or with the this little tip here. And we need to have one more, so 
I'll use all three colors on this project. And there we have it. Very easy to complete. I love that you guys are coming up with lots of different ideas on how to use the embellishments. We have so many embellishments to pick from that sometimes it can be a little overwhelming for me to decide which embellishment. And I generally like to keep it really simple. But this is our project for today. We are, we are start and finish with this. Let's have a look again at that watercolor wash to see how it's progressing. It's starting to lay down a bit, but by leaving this to dry naturally, all of those fun little little puddles of water and ink are doing their magic, and that's just going to carry a really gorgeous look to it. I'll do something fun with this project for another day and um, use it in some other way. It won't go to waste. We never waste any of our paper, do we? <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for joining me today for this tutorial. If you have any questions, whether they be on Facebook or YouTube, then just leave me a comment and I'll be happy to get back to you. And I want to thank you all for taking the time to spend with me today. I really appreciate your support. And I'll see you again next week. And I do have videos today on YouTube for the new projects. Let me give you a close look at this one. Let's see if we can get that to show up nicely on the camera. This is the one I showed you at the beginning, and I'm not sure how well the, the, the light is going to catch it. Yeah, I think it shows up a little better here. But this is the way the double Z-fold box card goes, and I'll stretch it out so you can see that coloring. This was a lot of fun for me to create. And yes, they do fold flat. See, it goes in an envelope just like that. Easy peasy. These are so easy to create by following the tutorial at Add Inktive. I absolutely love that tutorial. I do not even need to follow it anymore. I know, <laughs> I know all the measurements by hand. Okay, everybody, so have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!